Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies who try to destroy our America. With his faithful valet, Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed as he races toward another thrilling adventure. The Green Hornet strikes again. two men of mystery, two unknowns, continue to exist in the same city, the Big Four Gang, underworld organization of ruthless rackets, is led by a man who is never seen, even by his gang, a voice known only as Mr. Big. In order to force the Daily Sentinel to stop its campaign against the rackets, Mr. Big attempted to kill Britt Reed. The attempt failed, but rather than subject his staff to danger, Britt Reed gave out the information that he was leaving on a secret vacation. He did leave, only to return to the city as the Green Hornet. At the wheel of the Black Beauty, masked and mysterious, Britt Reed smashed blow after blow at the Big Four, trying to uncover the head of the gang, Mr. Big. I'll have your change in a minute, mister. Late one night, near closing time, in a small neighborhood drugstore, the man behind the counter made change for a solitary customer. Three makes 40, 50, 75, one dollar. Thank you. Okay, Tim. Was there something else? No. Oh. Well, it's late, and so I yes, want to... Tim, it's late. So what? I'd like to close up. Yeah, maybe you will close up. So if there's nothing else you want, I'll... I guess you didn't hear me, pal. Look, mister, I'd like to close a store. It takes maybe half an hour to lock up. i got to get home. You know how it is. So if you don't want anything I else, I... I guess I'll... you didn't hear me, pal. I said maybe you will close up. Huh? You run this joint, don't you? Say, this is the best drugstore in the neighborhood. Okay, okay. Ride with Britt Reed as he races toward another thrilling adventure. The Green Hornet strikes again. What are you getting at? Me? I come to give you a little advice, pal. You ought to join up. Join what? I belong to the Masons and the local Rotarian. What's your name? Me? Ferris. Why? Okay, Mr. Ferris. Let me give you a little tip. If you want to do business in a drugstore, you better join the association. You mean like them downtown places? <laughs> oh, no, not me, mister. That's a rack. Okay, Ferris, stop the kidding. Huh? Take that blank look off your puss. What do you think we're playing at? A game of Pachisi? You're on the list, see? You head of the big four. The big four? You mean... Get out of here. You got a week to join the organization, Ferris. Get out. I'm not knuckling under to any racket. This is a free country, and I'm a citizen. You gangsters can't put the pressure on me. I've got my rights, and I'm going to... Ah, come out from behind the Let's go. Let's go. Uh, all right, Ferris. What are you going to do with that bottle? Wise guy, huh? You see that counter over there? I... What's the idea? You got to your dumb brain now, chum? Well, you, you smashed the whole counter. Yeah, you're lucky it ain't your head. One week, Ferris. You join the association in one week, and next time there won't be nothing left of your joint. I go either. Hoodlum, walking in here. The big four, huh? Racket, that's what it is. Think I'm scared, huh? Uh, I'll show them. Ruining my counter. Hello. Hello, operator. Operator, I, I want to talk to the police. Yes, the police. No, Gunny can talking. Who? Sergeant Moran. You got something? Sure, let's have it. Nothing like news for a newspaper. What's that name? Okay, got it. Thanks, Moran. We'll give you a couple of tickets to the fight. Goodbye. Is this anything important, Gunnigan? Huh? Oh, yeah, it might be, Blackett. Let me see you come in. Miss Case! 
Casey. How is the Sentinel's campaign against the big four going? Could be better, Mr. Blackett. And the same goes for your campaign in the city council. Miss Cage. Right with you, Gunnigan. Matter of fact, this might be a lead. Is that so? Yeah, you can listen while I spread the word. You want to be Gunnigan? Anybody around, Casey, Lowry, Axford? Well, I can get Axford. He's across the street having a cup of coffee. Why? Well, he's just got a tip. Have Axford see a man named Ferris. Runs a drugstore uptown. Is it good? Don't know yet, Miss Case. It's about the big four. Gosh. Yeah. Dust Axford off and send him out there. Oh, but look at the time, Gunnigan. For Pete's sake, what's time got to do with it? Ferris got a threat from the big four, and I want to see him as soon as he can get there. Time for some shut eye. That's you, Crandall. What did Mr. Big have to say? Funny, Skip. You got a chopper? Huh? A chopper, a machine gun. Sure, for what? That monkey Ferris talked to the cops. You're nuts. Nuts me eye. I just got it upstairs for Mr. Big. We just left the big guy. I don't ask me where Mr. Big gets his dope, but if he says Ferris talked to the cops, why Ferris talked to the cops? What do you know, and how do you know it was, Mr. Big? You didn't see him? Nobody sees Mr. Big, never. Just his voice coming out of no place. Why? You want to disobey orders? Not me. Well, then start this car. We stop off at Ferris's place, see? With a machine gun. You heard that, Cato? Yes, Mr. Big. I heard. All right, back in the alley to the Black Beauty. And hurry, there isn't much time. <laughs> Like I said, Mr. Ferris, uh, we're sorry it's kind of late. Well, that's okay. You don't mind, do you? We're from the Sentinel. And, well, frankly, if we don't show up with the story, the news editors have to throw it to the lions. Oh, it's okay, miss. I wasn't sleepy anyway. I'm still burning up about that big four gorilla. You told the cops? No hoodlum's going to scare me. I told you, Axford. And you didn't want to come. Uh... You said it was another of Gunnigan's pipe dreams. So, and thanks, Casey. Will you skip it? We're here, ain't we? Yes, but... Uh... Then what's that all that matters? Go ahead, <laughs> It's about the big four. Gosh. Yeah. Dust Axford off and send him out there. Oh, but look at the time gun again. For Pete's sake, what's time got to do with Crandall? What's that? Crandall? That's right. Is he important? But holy crow, he's one of the big four top men. He runs the drugstore association. The police have a call out for him now. Golly, we got a real story. Did you hear that, Casey? It was Crandall that... Casey. Quiet, Axford. Huh? What's that, Darius? Well, that's a hot air register in the furnace. Axford, I heard a noise. Huh? Just now, it came from that register. There's no one in the basement. You certain? Of course. Ah, for Pete's sake, Casey. We're getting the story. Will you stop fussing around? Now, uh, where was we, Ferris? Oh, yeah. I was asking you about, was you going to swear out the warrant for Crandall's arrest? Careful, Cato. Dog, Mr. Bird. You know what to do, Cato? Yes, sir. This furnace pipe leads to the room where Ferris is talking to Axford in this case. If I shout into it, they'll hear me plainly. Yes. But they won't recognize my voice, and neither will those gangsters. That is true. I'll stay here. You get back to the car. Very well. They'll give those rats the scare of their lives. Signal me when you see them coming near the house. And don't forget, otherwise it may be just too bad. Just the wife and the kid. They're upstairs asleep. And that horn. You heard it, Axford. Golly, Casey, will you stop? That wasn't the Green Hornet. I heard something, but I know... No, there ain't nothing at all. Kate, crazy ideas, that's all. The Green Hornet doesn't fool Axford. You see what I mean, Ferris? It don't make sense. 
Besides, Casey, the harness ain't no part of the big fall. He's out to get him. Now forget about it, will you? You'll have us all jumping like rabbits every time there's a... <laughs> What's that? It's a doorbell. Oh. Oh, there. Do you see what I mean, Casey? No quit it. I wonder who it can be. Well, right with you, Ferris. Mr. Ferris. Yes? It might be reporters from some other paper. Maybe the Clarion. We'd like to keep this private for the Sentinel. Okay, if you say so. Yeah, we want a scoop. I understand. But I'll have to answer at least. Well, sure, that's all right. Just a moment. Yeah, what do you want? Inside, uh, Ferris. Uh, holy crow, stand down, you don't. Too bad you got company, Ferris. You... That's that a machine gun, lady. You rats, don't you dare to shoot. Talk to the cops, huh, Ferris? Uh, you aren't going to shoot yeah, me. Yeah, Ferris, yeah. When I give the word, you're all going to be dead pigeons. Anytime you say, Crandall. Line up. Against the wall. Ah, you little rat, I ought to... Oh. Against the wall. Yeah, like that. Watch out, Crandall. What the... Where'd that come from? There's somebody else in the house. It's the green order, Crandall. The green order. Let him have it, Skip. Get out of this house. Get her up and stay out. The lights? What happened to the lights? Get back, Casey. It's dark. Skip, shoot. Will you shoot? Not me. I'm getting out. I'm getting out. Skip, come here. Oh, you stop. Wait a minute. Let it go. Let me go. I ain't standing in here. First, that hornet starts talking. Out of no place. And then the lights go out. And that's bomb. It wasn't a bomb. Well, whatever it was, I... Huh? Behind you. Right behind you. There's a little guy with a gun. What are you talking? It's for you. Uh, Crandall, I... Get him out! 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 Get we have to have more definite information for the next edition, Casey. No, oh, I've still making the rounds of the hotel, Gunnigan. What about Ferris's home? Maybe he's back there. Well, Mrs. Ferris would let us know. He hasn't gone back. All right, all right. Daily Sentinel, Gunnigan. Yes, we called the police. Who's this? Oh, it's you, Moran. Have you got anything? Okay. Okay, that doesn't do much good. Keep in touch, will you? Sergeant Moran? Yeah, the police have no trace of Ferris. How long has it been? Four or five hours? Oh, all of that, Gunnigan. Why, well, it's almost breakfast time. Breakfast. Uh, what I wouldn't give for a big stack of wheat cakes. Oh, why not? No, no can do, Casey. I'm in charge of this newspaper with Reed out of town. We can send the boy for some coffee. A
What's that? Oh, good grief. I'll hold the phone. What phone? Gonna get it, Sarah. Harris. Yes, he's at the Blackwood Hotel. Give me that phone. No, oh, never mind. Get your bonnet, Casey. Get going. Me? Where? What do you think? To get the story, you're going to the Blackwood Hotel. <laughs> Yes, Miss Case. Yes, I, I called the Sentinel as soon as I recovered. The Green Hornet gassed you? When I stepped out that door last night. You remember in my house? What made you leave in the first place? Well, I thought I heard a noise out there. You were all so busy, I didn't want to disturb you. The Hornet was out there waiting. He must have been. The next thing I remember, I woke up in my car. The Hornet was driving. Your car? Well, what about the Hornet car? Yes, my car. Well, his car was following along behind. I don't mind telling you, I was plenty scared. Oh, good grief, who wouldn't be? Uh, I don't exactly know how I got here. The room clerk said I walked in in sort of a daze. <laughs> he, I guess he thought maybe I had a little too much to drink. It was that gas the Hornet uses, I guess. But now I feel fine. Look, no, never mind your personal history. Did you get a look at the Hornet? Sure, but he was wearing a mask. Oh. He said he was out to get the big four gang. That he was getting me out of my house for my own good. What did he mean by that? Oh. I don't know. Those two gorillas came over to use a machine gun on well, me. They're in I... jail. They couldn't harm you now. But still, the hornet seems so positive. Have you called your home, Ferris? No, not yet. It, it's so early. Why, you, you don't think anything's wrong? I, I don't know. Just a feeling. I... Go ahead, answer that. Hello? Yes, this is Ferris. What about my house? Yes. Yes, right away. What is it? What's wrong? I've got to go. Oh, what's the matter? You well, you look like a sleepwalker. My house. It's been bombed. Gosh, whoever tossed that bomb certainly knew his business. As flat as a pancake. My, my house. Look at it. Oh, buck up, Ferris. Your family's safe. They weren't in it. Yeah, they were with the police station. They got a call that I'd been located for them to get over to the police station. But I don't understand that. The police didn't call my wife. Don't you get it? The Hornet. What? The Green Hornet. He must have called your wife and pretended he was the police. Well, yes. Yes, of course. He ties in. The Hornet got you out last night and he said he was doing it for your own good. Then, then it was the four who did this? Your guess is as good as mine. But I'm betting it was the big four. Those dirty rats. Forget it. You're safe. Oh, it's not that. I have insurance. I'm fully protected. Yes, the big four are really trying to get you to lay off. They'll need more than that. I'm going to prosecute that man, Crandall, but the last thing I do... Now you're talking. Hey, Casey, Ferris! Where have you been, Axford? Trying to catch up with you, Casey. I went to the hotel, but you and Ferris had just gone out. So I called Gunnigan, and he said to come over here. Something snakes. They sure bumped your house, didn't they? It's the big four. The drugstore racket. Good thing your wife and kid was warned. They're trying to scam it, but it won't work. Huh? He means Crandall, Axford. Yeah, Crandall and other rats. Oh, yeah. I knew I had something to tell you. The cops want you to be extra careful, Ferris. Why? Because them two rats ain't in jail no more. They got bailed out. What? They're not in jail? Sure, Casey. Of course, they got to be back in court for the trial. But that's a long ways off. The big four got them out. So you better watch your step, Ferris. Them rats can be awful tough. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Big. What? If there are any explanations, I'll hear them from Crandall. He's supposed to be in charge of the drugstore association of my business. Yeah. It's this way, Mr. Big. As soon as we heard that guy first went to the police, we went over to give him the business. A machine gun? Yeah. A machine gun, like you said. But something went wrong. According to the Sentinel, it was the Hornet. Yeah. Was it really the Hornet? Or are you just covering up your errors? Well, we seen the mask, Mr. Bishop. Yeah, it was a hornet, all right. Me and Skip run into a load of gas, and we end up in the cooler. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Ferris's place was bombed, huh? I had that done later. Unfortunately, this green hornet was clever. He got the family out of the way by a phone call. Now, get this. You and Skip report back here tomorrow night. Tomorrow? Keep out of sight if you can. I have insurance. I'm fully protected. Yes, the big four are really trying to get you to lay off. They'll need more than that. I'm going to prosecute that man, Crandall, but the last thing I do... Do as I tell you. Come on, all night. Now go. Yes, sir, this is Skip's room, Gato. Yes, Mr. Rick. 
Never mind the lights. He's asleep. What are you doing, Fred? He and Crandall went to the meeting place of the Big Four tonight, kiddo. You think we can find out what they talked about? Yes, sir. Without waking him up? Yes, sir. All right, we're going to try. <laughs> He's uneasy right now. Shouldn't be hard to get him to talk in his sleep. Skip. <laughs> Skip. What did Mr. Big say? <laughs> Mr. Big. Tomorrow night. Skip. What about tomorrow night? What about tomorrow night? Seeing him tomorrow night. Yeah, nuts, you're dreaming. Go on back to bed. Yeah. Yeah, go back to bed. But I could have swore there was somebody. I could have swore. Hello? Hey, Casey. Is Gunnigan in there with you? Oh, yes, I expect Gunnigan's here. Why? On the count of Moran's here with some news for the Sentinel. Okay, send Sergeant Moran in. Ashland? Yes. He could have walked in here just as easy, but I guess he loves to fool with that dictograph. Sergeant Moran, huh? I hope it's something on the Green Hornet. Or oh, the Big Four. Either one. Take your choice. Hello, Gunnigan. Ask for said I could find you here. I got news. Shoot. Them editorials you've been running in the Sentinel produced results. The trial is set for tomorrow. Fine. Hear that, Casey? With both ears. If Crandall goes to court tomorrow, at least Ferris is safe from any more bombing. Sure. The department's got Crandall and another hoodlum watched every minute. Hope they don't skip out of the state. The state, nothing. <laughs> them two will have a tough time getting out of the city. The judge ain't fooling them. Where's Axford? Axford? He went over to Ferris's place. <laughs> Said he was going to give Ferris a fight talk so he wouldn't get scared in court and forget to identify them hoodlums. Oh, well, that's mine. Hello, Daily Sentinel. Yes, yeah, just a moment. To you, Sergeant Moran. Me? Thanks, Miss Case. The police department. Yeah. Hello. Sergeant Moran speaking. Yeah. Yeah? Well, what about Crandall? You... What? Well, start looking. Uh, Something wrong, Moran? Something wrong. Plenty. That crook Crandall and his triggerman skip. We don't know where they are. We was trailing them, but we lost the trail. How do you like that? <laughs> Why doesn't somebody open this door? Oh. Hello, Casey. What are you doing at Ferris's? Ashford, where is he? Is that Moran out in the car? Uh, yes. Crandall and Skip have disappeared. What? The police have lost track of them. Well, this time of night, they may never find them until... Well, until they get to Ferris. Where is Ferris? You sure he's all right? Ah, oh, Ferris, he's okay. Why don't the cops look for the meeting place of the Big Four? Listen, lame brain. If they knew where the meeting place of the Big Four was, they'd go there. But they don't know. Nobody knows. Get that through your thick skull. And unless they're located, Ferris may end up with lilies over his brow. Now, where is he? Now, don't get fretting about Ferris, Casey. He's right in the room behind me, just as safe as money in the bank. I'm keeping my eye on him personally. Oh, he's... Oh, he's... Oh, what was that? Oh, come on. Holy crow. He's gone. Ferris is gone. He was right here and now he's gone. Who is it? Holy crow. There's your answer, Casey. It's the green harness. Moran! Moran! It's the harness! Axford, step on it. He's going up the block. Moran! He's got Ferris! Ferris, yeah, yeah. He took him out of the house. Hey, listen to that. There's something wrong with the Hornet's car. The motor don't sound right. Pile in. Well, for once we can go after that car without losing him. Oh, I sure hope that motor keeps right on missing. Skip to show up tonight. Ferris can't be intimidated. You get out of town and the association can go on. There's no case. But if you're convicted... Okay, Mr. Fig. We'll blow. That's the door. Yeah, I guess it's Skip. He got held up, ducking the car. Now, let him in. Okay, dummy. Well, you've been keeping yourself on a merry-go-round. Come on in and... Boss! Get inside, Skip. Who's that? Boss, boss, close that door. It's the Green Hornet. Take on my arm, you. Get him. No, you don't, Crandall. Take it. Oh, sorry. He's got me a death breather. And this for you. Oh. <laughs> 
Gorillas, Mr. Big. A present from the Green Hornet. Come here. I'll get out of time, Kato. Close the door. Up this way, Ashford. Up this way. The police. That's Sergeant Moran's voice, Kato. Here. Look, Claire's down. That's it. Right in front of the door. Now, come on. We're getting out. This way. There's a fire escape. Hey, Moran, you see anything? Oh, not yet, Ashford. The Hornet must have come this way. There ain't no other way to turn from the stairs. Oh. What the? Oh, for snakes, Moran. There's somebody lying in front of this door. Yeah. Let me take a look at Ashford, it's Ferris. He's been gassed. Hold that flash this way. The harness must have left him. You see anything else? Yeah, Ashford. Yeah. A green harness note. It says the meeting place of the big four is right behind this door. Holy cow, then what are we waiting for? Not a thing. Come on, smash it down. Yeah. Again now. Come on. Well, climb go and skip. Pick him up, Ashford. This time we'll make sure they get what's coming to them in court. We ought to hear about the trial soon, Gunnigan. Oh, gosh, after all that excitement last night, finding the Big Four headquarters and smashing Easy, Casey, easy. The racket isn't smashed until the jury gives its verdict. Well, why doesn't Axford call? He's at the courthouse. You want me to get it? Yeah, go ahead, Anthony. Hello? Oh, yes, Axford, what about it? Oh, that's all we wanted to know. Gunnigan, you can break out the headlines. Axford says the racket is smashed. Great. Now, if the Hornet only finds out who Mr. Big is... Gunnigan, aren't you ever satisfied? <laughs> Popular radio dramas created by George W. Trentle are a copyrighted feature of The Green Hornet, Incorporated. All characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious.